can we develop a language that has consistent meaning? Well, if you still don't understand me, sometimes I might say, have a nice weekend. Why don't we say, have a nice life? Why just a weekend? <laughs> Our language, again, is old. The language of chemistry, mathematics, science, engineering is not subject to interpretation. When a chemist writes a formula, no matter what country it goes to, they interpret it the same way. I'm trying to tell you it's possible to develop a language that's not subject to interpretation. So we really talk at each other rather than to one another. Now, who are these people in government? What is a politician? I don't want you to take my word. I want you to walk over to any politician you know or do not know and ask them, how can you grow food faster without exhausting the soil and feed the hungry? I don't know. How can you make automobiles that don't hit each other? I don't know. How can you make highways safer? I don't know. They don't know anything. Don't take my word for it. Ask them. They really don't know a damn thing, and I mean politicians all over the world. All countries, all, are basically corrupt. If you don't understand what I'm saying, where do you think America got America from? You think the Indians just come on over, enjoy yourself, take all the land you want? No, we killed thousands of Indians. We starved 50 million buffalo to make it tough for the Indians. And the Indians that fought back really tried to take some land back, but the government decided that they wanted to get rid of those aggressive Indians that wouldn't conform to what we wanted. So they offered 10 bucks for every Indian you killed. And the guy walked over and he said, I just killed 10 Indians. The government said, how do we know that? Bring back a piece of the Indian. So they started scalping. Americans, not the Indians. And we brought back 10 scalps to collect 10 bucks for every Indian you killed. Americans are no good. The French are no good. The Greeks are no good. All nations are corrupt. They say the sun never sets on England. Where do you think England got all that land from? They took it by killing thousands of people. So, if you don't like the guy next door, if you shoot him and miss by one inch, you're not a murderer. If your aim is a little better, you're a murderer, if you hit the guy. So, today they have guns, machine guns with laser beams. When it's on you and you pull the trigger, bullets come out. If it's a little off, no bullets come out. The guns are getting smarter, soldiers are getting dumber, and they're killing. They're killing machines. We would train soldiers to be problem solvers, send them back to school. How do you bridge the difference between nations? How can we improve agriculture? How can we fight hurricanes, heart disease? This is a real problem, not killing. When you kill people and bomb cities, consider the abortionists. Some people say, gee, it's terrible. They commit abortion, they take a life. If these people were consistently educated, when you have war, you kill pregnant women, children, everybody. Why don't they fight against war? Why just abortionists? There's something dreadfully wrong with all our schools. They have better equipment than ever, the universities. The best. And the wars are getting worse. The atom bomb is considered nothing today compared to the cobalt bomb. It'll kill many more people. Each submarine, I'm talking about America, it's the only country I have information on, has 300 submarines. According to the Navy, each one has more destructive power than all the wars in history. What can you accomplish with that? How can you be kind or good? Suppose I have a factory and I turn out things 10 times faster than your factory. Same product. If I share that with you, I lose the competitive edge. If I have patents, I deprive people all over the world from making things that make life better. So how can you be decent? So you go to church on Sunday, and what do you do there? You look at the clothes of other people, everybody dresses to outpace the other person. And so when they go to church, what do they do mostly? Bother God. 
we need a new car. My wife needs a car. I'd like a home in the country, and I'd like this, I'd like that. And they say that God knows everything. That's what they teach you in church. God knows everything. He made every planet, every galaxy. So when I went to church, I insulted the minister by saying, if God knows everything, why did Jesus insult God? He said, I don't remember Jesus insulting God. Well, they crucified Jesus. Just before they crucified him, he looked up and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And God said, gee, I didn't know that, thanks. <laughs> you know, if he knows everything, what is Jesus talking to him about? There's something dreadfully wrong with education. The people in Washington, I can only talk about them, I believe all countries are similar. The people in Washington should know more about human behavior, the latest technologies. They tell you if you want freedom, write your congressman. Why do you have to write him? He should know all those things. When you fly on an airplane, you don't have to write the pilot, so you've been flying at an angle for half an hour, straighten up. They know their business. The same for government. They should know everything about modern technology, human behavior. When you put a man in prison, say he stole a watch that cost $150, and it's the fourth time he committed that crime. So you put him in jail for seven years, that's a hell of a lot of watches you can get. Figure the cost of that. Feeding them medical care for seven years. Let them have the watch. It's much cheaper to give people things they need than to kill them. It's much cheaper. Think of men in jail for life. You know how much that cost? They're worried about the fact that he tried to rob a jewelry store of maybe three or four hundred dollars. It's always cheaper to feed people. And when they go to jail, I can assure you, they don't come out any better. So everything new was fought. Women's rights, child labor, they used to be children in factories. Of course, it's a little before your time. But people marched to get the children out of the factories, and they had rotten eggs thrown at them. When you fought for women's rights, the same thing. They had rotten eggs thrown at you. What do you mean, women? Women are only good for two things, you know. So they had notions about women. You know, women can't learn to be architects and engineers. Women are just good to produce babies and cook for the old man. Well, all this crap is disappearing, but every inch of the way of progress was fought. Just remember that. Nothing comes easy. People are now producing articles about the Venus Project, because we're better known now. They said, Fresco gets his money from the Vatican, or the Rothschild family or this banking institute. I don't have any money. Fresco has two Mercedes. I don't even have a car. So anyway, they will spread whatever rumors they have to, to keep in power. And that's what you're up against. Whenever you do anything new or different, instead of people saying, you know, that's an interesting thing, let me think about it, you know, they get mad at you because you're upsetting the apple cart. And that's what it's about. We have a tough job ahead, all of us. If you wish to live in a world without war, poverty, unemployment, hunger, human suffering, you have to talk to other people. If you do nothing, I can assure you nothing will happen.